hello and welcome or welcome back to my channel my name is Jennifer and we will be finishing this wonderful stocking and I'm going to show you how to put the lights in um, this is the first time I've actually put lights in a stocking and the best thing to do is to make sure that the thing that it comes with works so I just grabbed some extra batteries to make sure that it actually lights up and it does so we're good on that front and uh, I figure I might as well take some uh, small sharp scissors and um, I'm gonna go along these little tiny slits here and cut through um, the tree and the backing of the stocking and um, you're just going through two pieces of felt and uh, this is why we don't stuff the tree I think if it wasn't lit up it wouldn't it would be stuffed but since we are using lights here then we are um, just uh, cutting through these little pieces of felt and I'm just trying to make sure I get to the back so I just make the littlest hole and just slowly cut it to where I want it to, to fit and um, what I'm doing is I'm actually starting at the bottom and then I'll work my way up to the top and I think I'm gonna configure some type of little like pouch for the, the switch so a little on off switch so this is kind of the concept that I'm going for I kind of experimented with a couple of these lights because um, sometimes they don't go all the way through but I'll just show you a couple of them um, as I go along here I'll kind of develop a technique so the whole point is to make sure all of the lights that you can actually see them all so I'm just trying to position these luckily they have these like um, wires that you can bend so it won't go too far so I'm just kind of securing it with a couple of stitches here and I may go on the front and secure it on the front too I'm not quite sure yet I'm just um, experimenting at this point I just want to make sure that you can actually see the light and that it doesn't go anywhere so starting the strands of lights is always a little bit tricky but as long as you go from the bottom up that's that's what you need to do that way you have easy access to the on off switch so I'm just securing it and we'll see how the other ones pan out so I'm gonna do a few more and see if I can get these um, lights to, to work I'm just checking to see if you can see it looks good I might go back and add a couple stitches on the front okay so we are a few lights in here still have a few more to go <laughs> my little my son wanted to grab the lights I said no don't do that so um, along the way I kind of developed this like technique so I use a pin to secure the light in the place that I want and then I use green to go back and forth underneath the light to reinforce it to where I want it and this seemed to work better than going from behind so this is just the way it's amazing what you come up with when you have to do something over and over again you just kind of come up with these things that, that tend to work better so I started off using red because I thought I was going to be securing all these lights in the back but it turns out it's way easier to use green to match the tree to secure the front first and then go back into the back like how I'm showing you now so that was kind of my thought process if you've made this stocking before and you have a specific way of putting the lights in I would love to know your method because this is my first time putting lights in a stocking not too bad and I always check to make sure I can see each light so I'm gonna finish these okay so I'm just gonna turn off my light here and check and everything looks really good my son likes the lights on the stocking okay I'm just making sure that it's all visible and everything looks great 
All right. Turn my light back on. <laughs> he wants to say hi. Okay, so, so here's what I have for positioning it. I figure I might as well do it like that so you can actually like bring out the um, the unit. And I think I'm gonna make a little pouch. So I'm gonna get the lining out. So I I already put the tab on. I'm gonna put the tab on first, and then I'm gonna put the lining over it. And then once I put the lining in, then I'll attach it like that. So I decided to add another layer of green to the tab because I felt like the felt, the green felt in this particular kit was really thin. So I just doubled it up and used a cool blanket stitch to attach it together. So now we're gonna add the lining. And then um, I decided to cut out a piece big enough to put the battery pack in. And you notice that I make sure I had plenty of room to take it in and out. So make sure that you take, take into account. And then um, I'm gonna just take a scrap and uh, put it in there. So it actually worked out really well. Not bad. <laughs> and by the way, this is not in the instructions. This is all I came up with that. So in the instructions, it actually has you just have it like at the bottom of your stocking. And I didn't want to do that. So instead of um, having the top, instead of putting the lights from top to bottom, I went the opposite and did bottom to top and then created a cute little pouch to hold, to hold that in. And I like this a lot better. That way you have a much easier time to get those if you need to take the batteries out and replace them and whatnot. So here is the backing completely finished and the battery pack nice and secure. So when you hang up your stocking, you can have easy access. So now we're going to do the name tag and here is the alphabet that it comes with. And this is for a family member. So I'm just taking my tissue paper, which you can get anywhere. Um, I, I like to use the white tissue paper just so I can see it better and um, I uh, trace it onto the, the, the white paper and it's a lot cheaper than tracing paper and um, you can get a whole pack of it for like 99 cents So I used the alphabet that comes with the kit and I just traced each individual letter making sure that they all touch. I know sometimes people will just do each individual letter and not even worry about touching the letters, but I really want it to look like it's a cursive name. So with cursive, you have to make sure all the letters attach. So I'm just trimming out the name and then I'll trim these pieces off because I don't need them. And then I'm gonna pin them onto the name tag. And I measured it beforehand, so it should fit just fine. So I'm gonna use some pins to secure it. And luckily this name tag has little lines so you can see the middle. And I like to draw the line on the name underneath, just so I have an idea of where it is, um, if it makes sure it's straight onto the tag. So just taking a couple of pins and it looks like we're gonna be Needing one more, maybe another one on this side, maybe not. I decided to do three. And we are going to embroider the name. And I like using tissue paper because it's just, it's thin enough to where you can see through and it's thin enough to sew through without hurting your fingers. Um, when I first started making these, I used to use lined paper and it was really tough to sew through. It worked fine, it just was really hard on my fingers. So I find that using tissue paper was a lot easier and um, I got the same result and I was able to sew faster because I wasn't, you know, pushing the needle all the way through the paper. It, it went in very easy. So this is how I like to do the names on the name tag. And right here I am doing an outline stitch the name tag and I'm using two strands of red and that's what it calls for in the kit so if you want to do a different color that's totally fine too I try to stick with the kit colors just so that you have an idea of what um, they want for each kit 
So you can easily customize this to whatever color you want. So I'm actually gonna finish this off camera so you have an idea of what it looks like finished. And here is the finished name. And I like to, to gently tear off the large pieces and then I'll go back and use tweezers to take off the smaller pieces, like like in between the letters and um, the circles and everything. So I'll just take off most of it by hand and then I'll go back and grab my tweezers and take off the little parts. And it's very easy to work with. Make sure that you're not pulling too hard because depending on how um, how your stitches lay and how um, depending on like the strength of your stitch will depend on if they come loose or not so depending on your stitches too so be gentle when you're taking that off so I am uh, making cording for this and if you don't know how to make cording I have a separate video I'll link somewhere up here in the cards um, so you have a really great video for that. So you can make cording. Honestly, cording is really not that hard to make. Um, I've made so many, I've made so much cording that it's really not, it doesn't bug me anymore. I know a lot of people don't like making cording. I know a lot of people will literally go out and buy pre-made cording. I don't see the need, honestly. It's so easy to make. Just uh, watch that short tutorial and you will be able to make cording no problem. So. I'm just attaching it to the inside where you can't see it and then the uh, the other half of the name tag will cover that knot. Okay, so I'm going to flip it this way like a sandwich and I'm going to sandwich that in and it should line up just fine. I'm just going to pin these sides so they don't move around. And then I will, I think I'm going to start here. And I'll do a simple applique stitch. And that way you, all of the stitches are hidden. And so you have a, a nice finished look. And I'll skip ahead and show you what it looks like finished. Okay, here's our finished name tag. And we are going to attach it right around here. I am going to actually go like this. Some people like to sew it on. I am going to just leave it like this. Because you can do it like that. And there you go. There is the finished name tag and the finished stocking. It looks so cute. And my table is crooked. <laughs> there we go. I'll fix it. There is the beautiful finished stocking. And I love the way it turned out. It was so beautiful. And I hope she likes it. Now we're going to work on the ornament. So this is a bonus ornament that comes with the kit. It matches the tree on the stocking. So I'm going to quickly show you how to put it together. It's rather simple. We've got a few candy canes. We have a present. And we have a toy. So... I just went ahead and did the beads and sequins. And here is the star that goes on top. So we are, this, there's no stuffing here. So beads and sequins, and then add the back. And now we're just attaching it to the tree. So I'm just using yellow to match the star. And I'm going to attach it with a few stitches here. For stars in general, I don't like to go all the way around. I like to use a few tack down stitches just to make sure it's secure enough. And then I'll go in the back here and do a couple back here. All these stitches will be hidden with the back piece of the ornament. Make sure that you, um, if you have pieces that are hanging, make sure they're really secured down and not too loose. Okay, I think it's pretty good. And I'm gonna 
secure it right here. Fix the knot. <laughs> it happens so often. Okay, fix the knot and then add a double knot back here to secure it. Next we're going to do the little candy canes. Okay, for these candy canes we have three of them and we are going to do or I might start up here so I'm gonna start up here and we're gonna do an outline stitch for the stripes which is a lot simpler than doing a satin stitch and these stripes are very thin so an outline stitch is perfect so we're gonna do an outline stitch for all three and that's gonna match the stocking and then we're gonna put these, we're gonna tack these down onto the ornament. And they're gonna look so darn cute. And I like to use pipe cleaners to stuff these stockings, or I'm sorry, to stuff the candy canes. Because stuffing candy canes is a little on the tedious side, even with a, a um, chopstick. So I like to just whip out my pipe cleaner and just uh, cut it to where I need it and then put that in and that is just it's it's honestly the fastest way to get these stuffed and sometimes they look fine flat too like this it's no problem they look great with nothing in them too so it's really up to you whatever personal preference you like or you can also use stuffing the choices are endless Okay, so this is what I mean. So here's a little pipe cleaner. I like to squish it in between the back of the front and I pre-cut it to make sure it fit. And then I'm going to applique it together. Okay, so now that we have the first one finished, I'm just gonna show you how to tack it down. And I just use um, white thread to match the candy cane because the candy cane is white. I wanted to make sure that you didn't see the tack down stitch. So I just find a few key points to where it doesn't look like it's hanging there, but it looks like it was placed there. I'm going to do this for all three candy canes. I probably did about seven or eight tack down stitches. I don't really count. I just go to where I feel like, oh yeah, this is fine. So just go around the whole candy cane and do it for all three. And then you should be good for the candy canes and then we'll move on to the present and toys. I think we're gonna do the toy first. Okay, candy canes are finished and they look so cute absolutely adorable. It looks like we're going to start on the backs of the toys and the and the present. And here's the toy. Fairly simple constructions, kind of layered on like the ball. I'm just going to put those together. Fairly simple and then there's a the backing that we're going to applique together and we will stuff these. Just slightly stuff them. Because if you overstuff these, your ornament will be kind of bulky. You don't want it to be too bulky. So I'm just going to go all the way around, about three quarters of the way, and then I will stuff it. Okay, so now I have it in position, and it looks like they're going to sit side by side. So I'm just going to um, applique this onto the front here. And I'm only going to applique whatever is touching the tree, so it doesn't fall off, because we don't want it to fall off. We want it to be nice and secure. 
And now we move on to the present and we are doing, what are we doing here? I think we're doing the little X's like the, I don't know if it's like a zigzag or, but we're gonna do the pattern first. So we're just doing straight stitches here. Using three strands of white. And I'm just gonna go each notch and make the pattern on the present. I like to go one direction first, and then once that's done, then I'll go the other direction so that they kind of all match. You can do it however you like. And I'm just stopping at each point where it crosses. So we're going to do that. And then we'll do the outline of the present. And the outline of the present is like a dark blue outline stitch. And then we've got the ribbon here. It goes right there. So I'm going to show you real quick. We're going to put the ribbon's actually really easy to put together. Um, the diagram is in, is in the instructions. So just a simple fold. And then we are going to tack it down with a bead and sequin. And that's about it. So you can see all my stitches in the back of the present. Luckily, they'll be hidden by the back of the present, so you don't have to worry about that. We're gonna fold it, and then we're gonna stuff it, and then we're going to um, applique it together, and then we're gonna put it onto the little ornament here. So I'm just gonna grab my thread. Showing you my quick knot. <laughs> I'm just going to start on the top and then go all the way down to the bottom and stuff it three quarters of the way in. Lightly stuffed. Okay, so again, here's more cording, and this cording is a lot thicker because this is for an ornament. So um, I'm just showing you how I put the cording in. It's very similar to the cording that we did earlier, just on the thicker side. So we're gonna place it right behind here and secure it really, really, really good. And then we'll be done with the front of the stock of the, of the ornament. And um, I'm just gonna attach the back and then um, stuff it and we'll be done with the ornament and we'll be done with this tutorial. I hope you guys liked this tutorial. Give me a thumbs up if you, if you liked this tutorial and if you want to see more. If you haven't subscribed yet, hit that subscribe button down below. It's the big red one. And make sure you turn on all the notifications so you don't miss any tutorials. I have so many to share especially with Christmas season coming up. And here is the finished ornament. It turned out so cute. And you can hang this on your tree with the matching stocking. So uh, thank you so much for watching and I will see you guys in my next video. Mm -hmm.